Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's class is on classifications and measures of character strengths. Let us discuss certain points, think over it. Identify your best 5 character strengths, which are the ideal character strengths for you? What do you think? Which character strengths should be in your personality? Which character strengths you would like to see in other people, in your society or in your culture? So, which character strengths you would like to promote in others, you would like to see in other people, in your society, in your culture. Next question is, do you think these strengths help us to have higher level of happiness? Because of high level of certain character strengths, we may have higher level of happiness, life satisfaction, quality of life or you could think how some of us are happier as compared to others. How do we assess character strengths? When I am saying, you know, different positive personality traits or character strengths, can we assess? Can we see some of us have higher level as compared to others? If yes, then what are the ways to assess their character strengths? Do we have cultural differences on character strengths? Do you think a particular culture or society or group of people have significant certain character strengths? Or do you think Indians have certain stronger character strengths as compared to western people, as compared to European people or maybe as compared to other Asian people. So, in this section we would be able to know all these answers. I will request to note down answer of all these questions, so that after attending these 2-3 lectures on character strengths, you could know how your knowledge has been improved, how you have more knowledge when you answering all these questions after uh, completion of these lectures. When we talk about character strengths, actually these are a central point for positive psychology and that is why these character strengths or related topics reflect in, in positive psychology definitions also. For example, this definition, I am just revisiting this definition, however, we discuss these definitions in introduction to positive psychology class. Positive psychology is the scientific study of the strengths and virtues that enable individuals and communities to thrive. It means these character strengths help us to have better well-being at individual level as well as at community level. This field is found to be the belief that people want to lead meaningful and fulfilling life and for meaningful and fulfilling lives, these character strengths have key role to cultivate what is best within themselves and to enhance their experiences of daily activities. For enhancing our experience of daily life activities as well as for meaning fulfilling lives, these character strengths are really important and they have major role in our life and that is why very important for psychologists to study what these uh, character strengths are and how we can enhance these character strengths. Another definition which is again supporting strengths and its values. Strength is defined as a capacity for feeling, thinking and behaving in a way that allow optimal functioning in the pursuit of values outcomes. So, this style actually promote our feeling, thinking and behaving uh, style in positive direction or it helps us to have optimal functioning. Optimal functioning have been used again and again. So, optimal means peak, ideal or best level of functioning uh, which is our ultimate goal as even humanistic perspective mentioned that we are programmed to grow. If we revisit again main objectives of this field of positive psychology, then again they are focusing more on character strengths. First point is again I am revisiting introduction to positive psychology just to connect this chapter with the previous one. 
identifying, amplifying and concentrating on the strengths that is our first objective. We want to identify all those character strengths and concentrate on all these uh, you know classifications as well as definitions of character strengths and identify all those character strengths which could contribute positively to our life. Second is need to measure these strengths reliably and validly and we need to develop some psychological test or other measurements or way of assessing these character strengths. Third one is develop test and validate interventions to build these strengths. How we can enhance level of these character strengths that is our third target in which we promote intervention programs and we want to study reliability and validity as well as effectiveness of those intervention programs which could work for us, which could uh, help us to have better level of character strengths. I think you know about this book Character Strengths and Virtues which was written by Peterson and Seligman in 2004. In this book actually they have identified 24 character strengths with 6 virtues or broader uh, super factors to some extent we can say. And uh, they also discuss about or ask about un DSM instead of DSM. The development of the character strength and virtues a handbook represents the first attempt on the part of the research community to identify and classify the positive psychological traits of human beings and they suggested to have un DSM instead of DSM-5. As I discussed in the previous class, DSM-5 means Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders which has fifth edition right now and uh, we have a number of abnormal disorders documented in this uh, manual. On the other hand, we do not have any manual which is describing positive personality traits, which is describing virtues and character strengths. So, in this book, Peterson and Seligman suggested to have manual in which we could have character strengths and virtues list and we could identify this is the list of positive personality traits or character strengths or virtues. Before knowing modern positive psychologist work on character strengths, let us revisit psychology and uh, various perspectives. In these perspectives, they have worked on positive personality traits. Uh, various scholars worked in this direction. Uh, Let us start with trait psychologist. If we just uh, take perspective wise, then in type and traits perspective, Alport focused on the healthy mature adult personality and he mentioned that there are some characteristics which are revealed in healthy and mature adult personality and he identified these positive personality traits. First trait is specific enduring extension of self or involvement. It means we are programmed to extend our self and have a, you know broader view of and every day we want to grow and expansion of self is important in mature adult personality. Second is warm relating of self uh, to others. When we deal with others, then we have positive interpersonal relations and during these positive interpersonal relations, we have certain character strengths which are mediating in between like trust, empathy, genuineness, tolerance and various other factors which help us to have positive relationship with others, warm relationship with others and that is second mature adult personality characteristic. Third trait of mature adult personality is emotional security and self acceptance. So, if we have mature personality, mature adult personality, then we have emotional security as well as whatever style we have, but we accept ourselves and self acceptance is part of it. Fourth one is habit of realistic perception and it is opposite to defensiveness. You know we use defense mechanism in certain situations and that is why we distort the situation and make situation as per our requirement which is giving less anxiety, stress, tension etc. But that is not reality. On the other hand, Alport focused on habit of realistic perception, realistic way of perceiving our life that is fourth mature adult personality trait. Fifth one is problem centeredness 
and the development of problem solving skills. He said uh, one should focus on the problem of uh, their life as well as how he can solve those problems and focus on solving those problems that is next characteristics of a mature adult personality. Sixth one is self objectification means perceive oneself objectively insight into one's own behavior, the ability to laugh at oneself. So, objectively perceive yourself as well as accept weaknesses as well as strengths of your personality and ability to laugh at oneself. So, whenever you find uh, it is really you know a humorous thing about you on only then ability to laugh at oneself that is also healthy or and mature adult personality sign. Seventh one is unifying philosophy of life, including a particular value orientation, differentiated religious sentiment and a personalized conscience, maybe religion or anything that gives meaning to one's life. So, something which is very important for us in our life and that is our uh, to some extent meaning of life and something which is very important purpose of our life and this purpose may be different for different people. For example, for a scientist it could be to do uh, the best level of research, for a sports person playing uh, sports, for a religious person participating in religious activities, for a social worker to participate in social activities and maybe for a spiritual person uh, focus on inner directedness. So, that is why different people have different meaning of life, different purpose of life, but somewhere they know what is philosophy of their life. So, uh, trade psychologist Alport realized these are the seven factors or seven traits which are the healthy mature adult personality characteristics. Similarly, early psychodynamic or psychoanalysis ideas of optimal personality are there. However, Freud started his theory with clinical population and he studied certain clinical cases to propose his theory. But successor of his theory, they uh, also uh, discuss about positive aspects of human personality. For example, Adler, he declared that an innate striving for pro-social interaction and altruistic concern for others that is very important in our life and it drives self-realization. So, for self-realization social interest is very very important and even for usefulness as well as uselessness style of life he said if we have social interest in our life then life is useful and that is useful style of life. On the other hand, if it is self centered and we are not focusing much on others well being or others uh, you know welfare, then this is useless style of life. So, that way he described how we could be connected with others and social interest is very very important for us. Even for the definition of genius, he said more social interest more or higher level of geniusness. Similarly, next scholar from this perspective Carl Jung, the process of individuation or self realization leads to the development and refinement of self archetype which is inherent wholeness of the personality. So, he also focused on self realization. He used various terms even some Indian terms to define self realization. For example, Mandal, uh, Atma, Paramatma, these terms were used by him to uh, explain self-realization. Similarly, another scholar Eric Erikson, he also discussed about virtues and he said during developmental stages we have certain crises and there are two options. One, you are resolving these crises positively. Uh, another option you are not resolving them positively. So, if you are resolving these crises positively, then you develop certain virtues in your personality or you include certain virtues in your personality. These virtues are like hope, will, purpose, competency, fidelity, love, care and at the end of or uh, the advanced life in elderly age that is wisdom. 
So, one by one uh, during uh, you know stage wise we have certain crisis when we resolve these crisis positively then only we add certain virtues in our personality and it happens stage wise which started with the birth or to one year and it is up to the end or up to the 60 plus age and that last highest virtue. So, if we resolve most of them positively then only at the you know elder quite elder stage we would be having wisdom uh, virtue in our personality. So, like that they did not talk directly about positive personality traits, but in their theory some positive aspects of human personality reflect and uh, they guide us to have uh, certain points to discuss uh, positivity in human behavior like uh, social interest, self realization or uh, positively resolved uh, crisis in which we add certain virtues in our personality like hope, will, uh, purpose, competency, fidelity, love, care and wisdom etcetera. Uh, Frankel's work is also very important, his main point was meaning in life and that is very important nowadays in positive psychology. His ideal of optimal psychological well being is the self transcendent person or someone who is able to rise above self focused concerns to seek some higher meaning and purpose. So, he focused more on certain higher level of meaning, higher level of purpose in our life and he said this is highly correlated with happiness. And in recent literature positive psychologist really focused on meaning and purpose of life and you would find in happiness uh, theories this is one of the factor for happiness. Uh, for Frankel, mental health is associated with a deep commitment to self awareness, honesty, grace, responsibility and active involvement in whatever life presents to us. So, it means there are some factors which are contributing to our mental health and these are highly connected with meaning, with purpose and various other character strengths which contribute or which uh, are associated positively with our mental health. His main point was authenticity. He said finding one's true self is ultimate goal of our life and that is uh, meaning or purpose of our life. So, that way he also focused on positive aspects of human personality. Let us move towards humanistic perspective, Rogers concept of the fully functioning person. Uh, if you just recall previous classes we discussed about uh, humanistic perspective in detail except these characteristics and Rogers view about uh, normal and abnormal behavior was if we have congruence in uh, between ideal self and real self then we are programmed to grow and growing in positive direction. On the other hand, sometime in some situations we have discrepancy between real self and ideal self, then we may have certain problems. So, if we do not have any problem in our life, then we are fully functioning person and these are the characteristics of fully functioning person. First one is open to experience. Both positive and negative emotions accepted. So, whatever we have in our life that is accepted, it is not uh, only positivity or only negativity, but we are quite balanced and open to all kind of experiences. Negative feelings are not denied, but worked through. I think to some extent you can connect it with Alport's characteristics of positive personality. Second one is existential living being able to live and fully appreciated the present not always looking back to the past or forward to the future. So, he said be right now right here. So, be in present living for the moment not focusing only on the past or future, but present is more important and this is mindfulness meditation or mindfulness message also. So, to some extent he has covered how we should focus on our present rather we are just wandering in our past or in future. So, this is actually characteristics of a 
fully functioning person if we spend more time in our present compared to past and future. Third one is trust feelings. People want decisions are the right ones and we should trust ourselves to make the right choices or decisions. So trust feeling and we have trust in oneself and that is why we rely on our decisions and we know we are going in right directions. So we trust on our own feelings. Fourth one is creativity. Creative thinking and risk taking are features of person's life. A person does not play safe all the time. He has to take some risk in his life for learning new things, for uh, learning new experiences. Th this involves the ability to adjust and change and seek new experiences. So for new experiences, new learning, we have to take some certain risk. We have to take certain uh, extra activities in our life and that is creativity. Fifth one is fulfilled life. A person is happy and satisfied with life and always looking for new challenges and experiences. So every day we are programmed to grow and these needs are deficiency needs or D needs which are physiological needs, safety and security needs, love and belongingness. On the other hand, our be or being needs are self-esteem and self-actualization. So once our deficiency needs are fulfilled, then we think about self-esteem. People need to feel a sense of competence, achievement and respect from other people in uh, their lives. And then uh, the higher level of need is self-actualization if our previous four needs are fulfilled, at least to some extent. People have a need to develop their unique potential and uh, again the same point we are saying that we are programmed to grow and this is the fullest level, self-actualization is fullest level and if our previous all needs are fulfilled then we are at fullest level and then there are certain characteristics in terms of self-actualizing person's characteristics. Motivation in self-actualizing people, he said there are some B needs which are fulfilled when you are in this mode like truth, justice, beauty, wholeness, uh, richness, uh, playfulness, meaningfulness and goodness. So these are the needs which we fulfill during and we are motivated during our self-actualizing level. He also mentioned that. Uh, one singular characteristic of a self-actualizing people is that they are motivated by B needs more than by D needs. I think uh, somewhere I discussed this point and I repeating it once again. There are broadly as per this theory two modes. One, your deficiency needs are not fulfilled and that is why you are working and you are motivated to fulfill your deficiency needs. These are physiological safety or love belongingness. On the other hand, if your these needs are fulfilled, then uh, we work on higher level needs and uh, then B needs actually are causes of our motivation. And that is why if you are working on deficiency needs, maybe you know higher level of uh, income or some safety you know incentives good for you. On the other hand, if your these needs are fulfilled, then something self-esteem, self-actualization oriented activities or needs will, would help you to motivate you. For example, at higher level, maybe social affiliation, maybe uh, you know leadership qualities, maybe uh, you are able to help others. So such kind of things are more important than need or D needs only. So uh, that is why. Again I am repeating there are two modes then. If your deficiency needs are not fulfilled, you would be more motivated for these needs. On the other hand, if your these needs are fulfilled, then you need something related to self-esteem, self-actualization kind of need which motivate you to have higher level of or something very interesting in your life. After uh, this theory, uh, hierarchy of needs, he identified self-actualizing people's trait. And in this case, he identified there are 50 personality traits. So he identified 15 personality traits. 
and he mentioned that these are not necessary. Uh, every self-actualizing person he studied showed evidence of all 15 traits, but some of these traits must be there. And uh, he uh, actually studied some people and on the basis of uh, his results, he identified these are self-actualizing people's traits, but not necessary to have all 15 in each and every one. First of all, he uh, had broader category and under this category he had certain traits. First category is openness to experiences. He said this is first broad category and under this category first trait is perceived the world without the distorting bias of their own wishes, hopes and anxieties. So, he said perceive the world whatever it is and do not distort it with you know your own wishes or hopes or anxieties. Again I think to some extent you can easily connect it with Rogers as well as Alport's traits in the same manner they have identified as realistic view of this world. So, that is very important for all these scholars they are saying that we should have you know realistic view of this world uh, about you, about uh, you know others, about the nature, about this world, about this society, about this uh, culture. So, there should not be defense mechanisms because defense mechanisms distort the situation and that is why we should have uh, you know accurate uh, world view. Second one is acceptance, acceptance of self, others, nature. It follows logically that self-actualizing people should also be better able to detect deception, weaknesses and shortcoming within themselves. So, they are more aware about their own weaknesses, they are more aware about their own shortcomings as well as others and then they accept others as well as oneself. So, because of realistic view they are not hiding their weaknesses or shortcomings and they accept like uh, you know advantages, disadvantages and all those things which they have in their personality or in their life. Third view is continued freshness of appreciation. This characteristic seems to describe an openness to a joy in and a gratitude for the moment to moment experiences of life. This is very important for us to understand appreciation in our life or gratitude. You know gratitude is very significant variable or factor in positive psychology as well as we have certain activities, gratitude oriented activities, thanksgiving activities to improve our level of our well being. Next one is creativeness, originality inventiveness, adaptability and spontaneity in the solution of the problems. So, whichever problems you have in your life, you are trying to solve them uh, with original view and a quite in inventive you are uh, and you have ability to adapt the situation and very spontaneous responses in solving these problems you have that is called creativeness. Sixth one is mystical experiences or peak experiences in our life. These are typically brief moments of intense joy and are often accompanied by heightened awareness. Frequently these experiences possess a spiritual or noetic quality. So, uh, again uh, he visited India as well as you know Asian countries and it reflects in his theory, in Maslow's theory and he also talked about peak experiences. Uh, you know uh, he also wrote in his theory about Indian ashrams and uh, he said sometime we have very pure mood and uh, during this pure mood we may have intense level of joy and some very unique and peak experiences these experiences may be spiritual experiences. So, he 
are also discussed about these peak experiences and these are in spiritual directions peak experiences not uh, you know abnormal kind of uh, you know something happening in your personality but because you have oneness with yourself and you have quite calm and uh, higher level of inner harmony or uh, inner directedness that's why sometime some peak experiences some peak spiritual experiences we may experience in our life that is his uh, sixth characteristics then he said there are some characteristics or positive personality traits as per autonomy seventh one is the autonomy under this autonomy broad category and he said independence of culture and environment is very important in these people they are not influenced by the cultural or uh, societal views they could remain fairly stable even calm and happy in the midst of frustrations and stresses they know this is frustrating and stressing situation but still they are able to maintain their calmness their happiness their stability their inner harmony and uh, they have that uh, you know uh, potentiality they seem to find intrinsic satisfactions rather than relying on extrinsic rewards from others so i think i have discussed this point again and again but once again just to know what are the differences between intrinsic motivation or satisfaction and extrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation means when you have your own motivation you have your internal desire to do certain things and it's not influenced by the external factors on the other hand extrinsic reward means when you have extrinsic factors like you are attending classes for attendance for marks for uh, uh, you know grading on the other hand intrinsic motivation or satisfaction when you want to learn and that's why you are attending certain classes so then extrinsic reward if we have then we rely on others and how others our situation is behaving with us it's in that term whether we are satisfied in our life or we are not satisfied in our life eighth one is the quality of detachment the need for privacy they are that is another uh, trait of uh, such kind of personalities maslow believe that his participants show a distinct tendency to enjoy solitude and privacy they want to stay alone in some situations it doesn't mean they don't like other people they like other people but in some ca cases or in some situations in some mood they want to have privacy and solitude or aloneness where they are connected with themselves in indian religious literature uh, also uh, we talk about asakt anasakt and anasakt to some extent can be connected with this detachment i'll discuss this point when we will discuss indian constructs how these are contributing to positive psychology next one is the resistance to acculturation maslow stated that self actualizing people are not well adjusted in some situation they are not adjusted because they are not molding themselves as per uh, social and cultural requirements and that's why they have their own style and it's not affected by social and cultural factors and that's why some situation it seems they are not well adjusted they lived in their society usually without overt rebelliousness or unconventionality but their inner attitudes and beliefs were not shaped and dominated by the masses from that society so that's why they have their unique style which they have appreciated in their personality but that's not influence of a given society or culture and that's why because of this unique style of their behavior sometime it seems people are not well adjusted of this category next group of traits is under positive relationships with others under this category he used a german term which means community feeling maslow deliberately borrowed the term social interest from his mentor adler and he said this is very important to 
have in uh, such kind of persons and people appreciated this quality. Maslow's participants manifested a deep feeling of empathy, compassion and humanitarian affection for people despite an intense awareness of others imperfections. So, he said we want to have positive interpersonal relationship with others by using certain positive personality traits or positive personality interpersonal relations or characteristics like feeling of empathy, compassion, uh, affection uh, for people and uh, we know other people are have Im imperfection, but simultaneously we know even we have imperfection. So, if we know with reality view or with real view others as well as we ourselves have some imperfection, the next step is accept it. And uh, when you know this acceptance is important uh, whether we are dealing with ourselves or we are dealing with others, then you do not have any you know problem to accept their uh, living style. And uh, in between these uh, character strengths, empathy, compassion, affection, etc., help us to accept this feeling that is his tenth uh, trait of personality. Then he discussed about interpersonal relations and he reported that his participants experienced deeper and more profound interpersonal relationships than the average person. He also observed that their friendships were extremely close but not numerous. So, whichever relationship they have these are in depth and these are really helping to some extent we can say soul to soul connections rather just superficial relationship with other people. So, that is why he said these people have deeper more intense more profound interpersonal relations uh, than the average person, uh, but number wise it is not too high. On the other hand if we just talk about uh, latest society then they count how many friends they have how many you know relations they have, but uh, uh, even in positive psychology recent researches they are saying number is not very important, important is how much de in depth or intense relationship or very close relationship we have with other people. So, it means number is not very important, but in depth or very deeper intense and a very profound uh, level of interpersonal relationship is important, which is a quality of this group of people. Twelfth is philosophical unhostile sense of humor. They did not laugh at other people, but rather laughed with other people. So, they have very innocent uh, you know sense of humor and this sense of humor again uh, you know part of positive psychology and uh, scholars talk about this humor which is not hurting others as well as oneself and you are able to make any situation humorous. So, you are liked and because you keep light environment then. Next point is problem centering. Maslow found that his participants tended to be oriented to some problem, task, vocation or mission in life. The self-actualizers devote a good deal of energy to task they believe would benefit others. So, they said they try to solve certain problems which help others to have better well-being and they spend time for those activities, those you know task, vocation or uh, they sometime even they have mission, mission in their life. So, this mission, this uh, these tasks, vocation which help others they want to have in their life and such kind of problems are centering in their life on which they want to work in their life. Next category is strong ethical standards. This group of people have very strong ethical standards. The demographic character structure is the 14th number. Maslow found that they were more willing than uh, most people to listen and learn from anyone who might have something important to say. They have that tendency whoever has some good lessons for them they are interested to learn and when they are learning these lessons they do not uh, consider much rank, class, status and educational attainment. They know any person 
could give good message to them. It is not only good rankers would be or good class people or status. So, they do not give much importance to all these things because they know they can learn from anyone and anyone could give good message to them and help to them to grow further. Fifteenth is discrimination between means and ends. He stated that his participants were quite clear about the differences between right and wrong and lived according to those values. So, strong sense of ethical and morality they have. They know these are the ways to live in life and give more importance to ethical living, morality in their life and accordingly they design their life, they design their behavior in day to day life and they try to do right in most of the situations. After knowing all these traits, then some scholars work on intervention programs and there is some work. However, that is again history of positive psychology, but still before initiation of uh, positive psychology, there were some intervention strategies in which people try to improve these self-actualizing person's traits or qualities. Personal growth and human potential, that is next point here, therapist and researchers associated with humanistic psychology have developed many intervention strategies aimed at helping people to move towards optimal well-being. So, in these intervention strategies, however, were not very famous, but still they try to improve their uh, self-actualizing qualities so that they may have higher level of well-being or optimal well-being. So, uh, for supporting all these things, they propose certain intervention strategies even before initiation of positive psychology. During the 1960s, leaders of humanistic psychology created a style of intervention called personal growth therapy or human potential. So, in such type of studies, they try to improve their personal growth, they try to improve their potentiality and such kind of programs they proposed and uh, they study their effectiveness, how they can help people to grow further. Next perspective could be cognitive perspective. Let us know how cognitive perspective contribute to positive psychology. Cognition, how we think impact how we feel. There is significant correlation between thinking and feeling. If we have positive thinking, then positive feeling and positive emotions. If we have negative thinking, then negative feeling and negative emotions broadly we have and there is significant correlation or connection between two. That is why even in cognitive therapies, uh, we try to change maladaptive thinking style, so that we could reduce negative feelings and emotions among people. So, that is why uh, thinking process is very important and if we have positive thinking process, then it is contributing positively to us, not only cognitive psychologist, but even uh, religious spiritual leaders as well as other specialists focus on thinking processes. For example, Gautam Buddha said, we are what we think. And similarly, with our thoughts, we make the world within. So, that is why thinking process or positive thinking process is again very important and uh, it can be part of character strengths. Thank you. We will keep this uh, topic continue in the next class.